everyone. Today we are trying out a new foundation. We are going to be trying the Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. This is in the shade L30. I picked this up from Sephora recently and I wanted to do a video dedicated to trying out this foundation, seeing how it wears and how it looks throughout the day. This is the final look. We will be doing some check-ins uh, throughout the day to see how things wear. So if you're interested in learning more about this foundation to see if it is a foundation that would be good for you, go ahead and keep on watching. <music> Today we're going to try the Bite Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. I just did my eyes off camera first because I didn't want to have to do them once I had already applied my base. So I have primer down and now we are going to try this foundation. It is kind of a moussey texture when I applied it on the back of my hand. It is in this, you know, squeezy tube type of bottle, which I don't mind the squeezy tube type of bottle, but I typically prefer a pump. I feel like I can control a little bit more how much foundation I actually use. I feel like with a squeezy tube like this, it's easier to use too much foundation or you know, you feel like maybe you're not using enough. But I'm trying it with a brush and maybe we'll try it on the other side with a sponge. But typically, I like to use brushes because those tend to deposit a little more pigment onto the skin. So sponge, we're gonna try the other side with this. So I definitely think that the sponge is giving a more lighter coverage, whereas the brush did do more, but I am gonna go over the brush side a little bit with this sponge to smooth everything out. This is looking really glowy on me. I'm gonna use this brush and just go over this side a little bit more because I feel like the sponge didn't give it equal coverage. What I mean about the squeezy tubes, you know, I had put a dollop on my hand and then I did another dollop and it still didn't seem like enough and now here we go going in a third time. So I think that's more evened out now. The color is a pretty good match for me. I'm gonna go over again with a damp sponge to even everything out. I'm gonna go in with concealer and let's see how concealer does over top. Concealer is on. I'm just feeling my face, feeling the texture. It is still slightly tacky. It doesn't feel like it's drying down very much. More of a hydrating glowy feel on my skin. I'm gonna set the concealer and the face, and we will go from there. This foundation does have a powder foundation version of it, the Bite Change Maker Powder Foundation. Um, I didn't pick that up this time. I picked this up because it was on sale in Sephora, and I wanted to give it a try. But so far, I'm not sure if I'm feeling it. But just because I'm not feeling it right now doesn't mean that it won't wear well throughout the day. 
All right, so now that I'm powdered, I'm gonna finish the rest of my face and then we will see how everything looks, assess, and then we will start checking. Here we are, the rest of the face is done. For eyes, I use the Maybelline Nudes of New York. For bronzer, I use the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer. Essence Pure Nude Highlighter in Be My Highlight. Maybelline Fit Me Blush in uh, Peach. Yes, Peach. The Falsies Lash Lift Mascara. Um, I also used the Physician's Formula a uh, healthy powder foundation for all over the face and the CoverGirl Advanced Radiance powder for under my eyes. The Brow Fast Sculpt for my brows. So that is what I used on the face. Oh, also for the lips, I used the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in Moon. So right now, even though things are powdered down, they still feel a little tacky. Um, especially around my nose area. So I do have to go out today. I will be wearing a mask. So we will keep that in mind. And as I wear a mask, if things start to mess up a little bit, I can touch it up throughout the day. But besides the places where the mask would be, what I'm looking for is creasing, you know, in my forehead lines, settling here in my nose, um, here on my chin. You know, if anything's starting to break apart on the face, um, I wouldn't say it's transfer proof because I do have a little bit on my fingers when I'm touching, so I wouldn't rub a lot um, or try to touch your face a lot maybe with this foundation, but again, we will see how it wears. So, now we're going to start check-ins. I'm going to check in a couple times throughout the day to see how things are wearing. And then we will give our final review at the end. The check-in time for our base today, this morning, would be at 9.10. So I finished my face around 9.10. And I am going to try to wear this foundation all day. Make sure I add the times and how long the foundation has been wearing for in those check-ins. All right, so first check-in, we're about four hours in. We're gonna zoom in and look real quick. So I have noticed a little bit of settling in the fine lines around my nose and up here. There's a little bit of transfer from my sunglasses, but not too much. I'm getting ready to head into an appointment where I'll be wearing my mask, so we will definitely get a good look at that um, in our next check-in. Right, so here we are about eight hours in it is a little past 6 30 so we're gonna zoom in so it is looking a little cakey around my forehead it is settling a little bit and breaking apart in my fine lines a little bit around my nose it did wear off from my mask but around the perimeter here it doesn't look too cakey it looks more natural looking so at this stage it is looking okay um, for a long wearing foundation not as long wearing as I would hope for but overall looking okay so we will check back in in a moment for our final review okay so we are going to do our final check-in and review so I am gonna zoom in real quick so that we can get a good look at the skin so obviously around the nose here up here on the forehead, down here on the chin. So I'm gonna go over some of the points, the talking points of this foundation with you guys, um, and then I'm going to give my final review, but I did wanna get an up close um, you know, picture of the skin for you guys so that we can see and talk about it. 
we are now in our final review. We've had a couple check-ins, so let's talk about the Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. So I went onto their website and looked up some of the information and some of the claims of this foundation. It's a clean, high-performance foundation with gentle micellar technology to mimic skin texture for a, new, a natural, flawless finish. Long wearing, medium buildable coverage, mimic skin texture for a smooth and non cakey look. So for me, obviously upon, you know, putting the um, foundation on, I did feel like it looked dewy on my skin. Um, but once I finished my foundation routine and I had all the other makeup on and it had settled, you know, onto my skin there. Um, after a while, it did have more of a natural um, look on the skin. So I can say, you know, maybe not initially, it had that natural look on me, it did look dewy. So there is that. Um, as for medium buildable coverage, I did agree with that. As you saw earlier, you know, on the one side of my face with the brush, it did apply more and with the sponge, I was able to build it up and I was able to use those tools on the opposite side to build up where the sponge was enabled and to tone down um, where the brush had applied too much. So as for the non-cakey claim, for me, I felt initially it didn't, um, you know, upon applying, it did look a little cakey, but then once I had my other makeup on, it seemed to have, you know, looked more natural. But as the day has gone on, I do feel like it has started to look cakey on my skin. So... As for that claim, for my particular skin type, which is more of right now a normal to combo oily um, skin type, I would say that it isn't it, it doesn't necessarily keep your skin looking non cakey throughout the day. So things to keep in mind for sure. Um, I had some high hopes for this foundation and I definitely feel like, you know, a, a little bit let down. I've, I've heard some good reviews on this particular foundation and I thought it would be a good fit for me to try and I'm glad I was able to, to be able to try it. I think I might try it one more time um, with a different primer underneath. Maybe the primer that I had underneath was a little bit too hydrating. I wore the um, Milk Hydro Grip primer underneath. Typically that primer does help keep the foundation gripping to the skin. It keeps the makeup grip onto the skin and you know I felt like especially when it came to like my mask or even down here like on my chin there is some you know separation and the, the foundation has worn away um, and typically I love that primer and I found that you know even with that primer those things wore away now for the hydrating aspect of that primer maybe it was a little too much I am going to try it with a matte primer and see how it wears, but at the current moment, I'm not 100% sold on this foundation. You know, for someone who might have a more dry skin texture, who is looking for something that's going to be a little bit more hydrating and glowy on the skin, I think this would be a great option for you. Um, but for me, I'm just not 100% sold, so I'm going to try it again. Um, and see how it goes, but not for me at the current moment. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all got some good information out of it. If you are interested in more videos like these, please like and subscribe to this channel. I would love it if you would comment down below. Thank you all so much, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Bye.